a perfect record. Eight contests, eight wins, three England, the undefeated Charlie Edwards. He is the reigning and defending IBF flyweight champion of the world from Ormoc City, Philippines. It's Cuadro Alas, John Riel. Get some memo. James Nagel, Billy Joe Saunders, Liam Smith, Kel Brook, Ricky Burns, Anthony Crawler, Terry Flanagan, Lee Selby, Carl Frampton, Lee Haskins is on later, and Jamie McDonald. Can Charlie Edwards? The trainer can't do anything. The fighter's got to implement that game plan. And, you know, we're seeing here, Casemiro's actually getting up to him closer a little bit earlier than what I expected. I thought he'd take it. Look, another right hand. I, I was expecting it to be a little bit more comfortable early doors for Charlie. Yeah, and Casemiro throwing some big shots. He looks like he's... He's looking to make an, ex an explosive statement right off the jump. We're going to see a lot about Charlie Edwards tonight. I wonder if he's looked at him and thought, this is a youngster. He's 23. He could be mistaken for 16 or 17, and maybe he feels he's a bit brittle and he can apply the pressure and he'll crumble, but Edwards, he's looked so far pretty tough for his uh, slender physique. We'll find out more here close relationship over in Marbella where Edwards has honed himself into a uh, top physical shape he's never out of it really but for this one he has to be spot on and so shines don't always throw it so hard and then see if you get a reaction out of Casimero maybe you can counter his counter off of that toe to toe there and Casimero trying to drag him in Dave he's got to be careful to use that jab You see, he's, he's, he's heavily relying on that one single heavy jab. Yeah. Maybe even maybe even double up the jab. You can counter over his over his shot. See here, yeah, right hand again, Casemiro, just trying to get his combinations flowing. Right and hand, right, Dave. Yeah. I mean, he's looking for a huge right hand. At this point, you know, I, I would I would say Charlie should try to almost lure it out of him yeah. and, and get ready to counter it. You know that right hand's coming. You know he's going to shoot it. He's just looking for the moment. Maybe give a, give him that moment. Give him the bait. Let him fall for it, and then counter with a big shot yourself when he throws the right hand. Because Charlie is a taller guy. He can pull on that right hand and counter back with his own left. He'll really be able to bury it. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think Casemiro's having to work hard to get in range to, to him, which you would hope that early doors, you know, Charlie be making him work hard, use his legs. Amongst them, some electricity and real belief. But has this come too soon? Does he know enough? Is he as experienced over the course of rounds, three-minute professional rounds? Has he got enough in the bank to be able to somehow fathom away to take this title, bring it back to Britain? Because Casimero has seen many different styles. He's that much further down the track, Paulie. Yeah, he has. He's much playing, and I see him doubling up a little, doubling up on it a little bit more as this third round starts, and that's part of the the adjustments that I think he has to make. See, this is better. He's using his speed to get out of the range and not give Casemiro anything on return. Get your jab off. Look for something. If he's, if he's not there, then get your feet out of there. Hunting the body as well. Cassie. Any fights along the way, but you know it's, it's refreshing to see kids that are coming out of Team GB wanting to take, you know, wanting to take a big step to test how good they are already. You know, but maybe sometimes you look at a video, you look at you look at table fighters, and you don't think they're as good as what they are. They get in the ring and they read fights. I really see Charlie panicking. I just feel like he has to believe in himself a little bit more. I think he's as the sharper of the two guys as far as offense is concerned. I think he's a better boxer. He just has to believe in his speed a little bit more and really bring back some, bring some other punches behind that jab, either more. Jab Jabs or a right hand arrow, eye catching for the judges' day. Eye catching without a doubt, yeah. He looks like the guy that's putting the pressure on, making Edwards work harder than what, what he, he needs to be or wants to be doing. IBF flyweight title, big leap up, step up himself for Epsom's Charlie Edwards, the 23 year old, and only fight number nine, which has been for a lot in his life, and he's ready for anything Charlie Edwards can throw at him. He was saying himself, Casimero, that he was once like Edwards, and he admires his ambition in taking this chance, but it's just too early. Yeah, he's a champion that believes in himself, is Casimero. And uh, as we talked about earlier, I mean, he's... It was hard on the streets of Akebu City. 
and just started to dig in some body shots and you see, really winging them. You see, oh, oh big uppercut, and Edwards felt that, and that's a work and putting him in position to set him up for other offense. This is what I like about Casemiro, he's not rushed it. For John Real, Casemiro, an and accidental head clash. Calls that now we're uh, into the fifth round that will go to the scorecards of which surely on yours John Real Casemiro is way ahead. Yeah, way ahead way. But he's got a long long way to go. Right here you want to see Charlie be first in these kind of moments. Especially when Casemiro misses. You gotta initiate the yeah. offense right back. Oh, that right hand again, just waiting for the of a career that started in 2007 for John Real Casemiro. And this is only the 57th for Charlie Edwards. That's the difference. Is it Casemiro still looking for that right hand over the top of the jab? He's going to look for that all night. And a good ring brain too to just try and keep his composure. Stick to the tactics. No real panic, though. No, he's, he, he, he may look like a young, young, young baby, but you look at him and, and how he's fighting. He's showing a lot, a lot of toughness in there. He's showing that he's fighting like a man, which is what he needs in this fight. He's, he's getting more confident in the right hand. He's, uh, his corner did say start using more of the right hands, and he's getting more confident in shooting that right hand. Win or lose this, it could be the making. Uh, it of is Charlie. appreciated by these fans. I'll tell you. Better from Charlie Edwards. Yes, better last round. Again, good instruction from the corner. Bring out the more of the right hand. Go to his own right, which would take him away from the Casimero right hand. And Casimero, I, I, dare I say, it, for the first time, looked a little bit of that round. Oh. Good right hand to the head, though. To watch the uh, leaky defense. Edwards, is he going to take risks? Is he going to get back behind that jab? And he said, he's That's getting it now. Why? He went both times. He got him with right hands this round. He, he needs to get back to his game plan. Casimero did lose to Amit Ruaron in June last year. But apart from that recent form, has been knockout form. A win in 11, a win in one, in two, in four. That's the power that he has. And he hasn't taken Edwards out early, but he might feel that down the stretch, he'll still have enough zip about him, especially if he continues to land the body shots like that. A little bit of time ago by Steve Gray, but he's starting to just get through, and Edwards felt that. Oh, big shots here from Casemiro, and Charlie Edwards has to hold on and cling, and has he got the experience and knowledge keeps, and know-how to do it? He keeps ducking the same way, yeah. Casemiro yeah. knows. He keeps throwing the uppercut, Charlie has to make an adjustment. Hooks going in from Casemiro, who feels he's more powerful, stronger, and in charge, and look at the flyweight title. Judges Michael Alexander just in front of us from Britain, Glenn Hamada from the USA, Dan Rick taps it down from the Philippines. I wonder how they're seeing things. They might not be needed if this uh, ferocious attack from Cassidy. He's got to frustrate him this round and not give him anything this round. Don't let him hit him with anything hard. Get on the end of the jab, time up when he gets close. Just don't be there the to thing be is, hit. The thing is, Dave, he's already been hit with those at earlier hard assault to start the round. He's got to take back control of this round. As the body shot again, showing a decent chin here, as you said earlier, Dave, Charlie Edwards, but can he take sustained punishment in a... With his own left hand, not always throw the jab so hard, put out those touch shots and see the reactions you get and set up Casimero. Casimero was actually doing it to him there. Big right hand. It's another one. Oh, oh and he's just gripping now. Real's brother. I, I, once again, I like the instructions in the corner from Danny Vaughn, though. Keep that left hand up and use your right uppercut left hook when he comes in, when he flies in. And what does that mean? Casimero comes in with wide over the top right yeah. hand. So if you're blocking with your left hand, watch where Casimero's head winds up when he throws the overhand right. It's in the trajectory for the uppercut to be thrown by Edwards with his right hand. So if he, if he does catch the Casimero right hand with his left hand, he can shoot back with the uppercut and left hook. I like the instructions from Vaughn. Moving as free as he can, trying to uh, rat a -tat, get the uh, punches home that he's uh, crafted since an 11-year-old. Really good member of Team GB, had a, a great rivalry with Jack Bateson and showing some skills here, Edwards. Will it be enough though, at the moment, on your cards, no, at no way. Moment, no, at the moment, no. And, and the worrying thing is that, is, is that on each attack that Casameo's launching, 
Charlie looks like he's worried. He, he, you know, he's not. He's not got the experience of uh, looking at the body shots that he's taken there. They, yeah. Now, I call that going into flight. He's, he's almost in flight mode, and you can't set up any sustained offense when you're in flight mode. Mm. And we're already in round number ten. Nine minutes to go. Dave, Paulie, how are you seeing it on on the cards? The three judges, obviously, what matters. But what's your feeling I, I, at the moment? I've got it. I've got it wide. Uh, for yeah, yeah. I've honest. got I've got Casimiro way ahead. I, I, I think Charlie needs to finish a big finish for this fight. And I like how he's holding his. He's still got that mean streak in him. There has been signs from Edwards. Would the team, Dave, right to take the opportunity here, or would you have waited, say, a year or two? I don't mean, he's not disgraced himself. He's, sh he's shown a lot of character in this yep. fight, and it's a fight that's going to bring him on. People are too afraid to lose their unbeaten record. If you're going to get beat, you might as well get beat in a world title fight. You know, and like I said... As I think that's a good point. Paul, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, it was a worth, worth taking a shot, especially at this weight class. You know, the guys tend to get title shots a little, a little earlier in this weight class. So, you know, you, even if you lose, you're not going to disgrace yourself, especially the way Charlie's been competitive. And, and when trying every round. Well, let's be honest, there's not as many of you, are there, Dave? You struggled when you were in that division. So when, when, when I boxed, you know, way back, there was about 26 fighters in Britain. Now, it, oh, 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 beautiful shot. Yeah. To walk forward, Steve Price giving him every opportunity. Exactly. Every opportunity. Casemiro wants to get on with it. There's over a minute left. He's got a hold. Does he have the experience to hold? Can he recover from that? I don't think so. Steve Gray holds it. It is over. John Real Casemiro successfully defends his IVF title on the road again. It's there from Edwards. A real learning fight, guys. But Casemiro, take your hat off. Ladies and gentlemen, at 1 minute 57 seconds of round number 10, referee Steve Gray stops the contest. In his opinion, Charlie Edwards in no position to continue. The winner, and still, the IBF flyweight champion of the world, John Riel Gessamero. Well, a brave effort from Charlie Edwards, but ultimately... John Riel Casimiro, former IBF flyweight and super flyweight champion, facing off against Kenya Yamashita. Casimiro, this is a 10 round fight, man. Okay, after the disruption, good fight and good luck. Okay, back to order. He's a former IBF light flyweight and flyweight champion. Holding, holding, Yamashita. Stars, in fact, the two Peña losses, no question, and has the experience, no question. Oh, big right hand. That is definitely the case, and also first time. Uh oh, man. uh oh. Sa ibang one side. Madi, madi. Minsan na lumaban last year yun. Oh, agad. Bilang si Casimero actually had a golden chance for a world title shot. Kaso na talo sa kay Jonas Sultan, which set up course yung ating IBF champion at 115 na si Jerwin Angka. Downstairs actually very often hooks him, hooks si Masita, hooks him again. Uhu yung mga yan, talo na sa umaga. Ang habol mo dyan, eh, makadevelop ang hangin. Best of which is the bantamweight Naoya Inoue. People 17 years old nung nagsimulang maging professional si Yama. Siya nung kabilis ang kanyang pag-akyat. Oo, oh, nandidiin na si Casimiro. Gusto na umuwi. Medyo malalit na yung gabi, no? Ha? Yeah. Some fighters, malakas sa flyweight, malakas sa super flyweight. Pag-angat nila, nawawala yung power. Ayan na, no? Alam niya yung hapon. Karamihan, traditionally, mahina ang bodega. It's just their body structure. That jolted the head back. And that one as well. This one as well. Parang hindi pinapawisa si Casimero. No? Meron naman po. Woo! Solid right hand. That hurts Yamashita. They pounce him again. Casimero sensing an opening here. Closing seconds of the round. Asimera trying to pour it on, but holds. Steps back. Oh, great shot! That whacks the head of Yamashita. When he is on, he is on. John Del Casimero. Atitenyo ng smart. May laman na yung mga sutong nito si John Del Casimero loading. Gusto mo magajoin do sa party na? Sabi mo sa jaryo bukas, ikaw lang yung nakadesisyon. Siyempre, ayaw mo noon. Gusto mo tumapos din ang laban. And parang ano yun, ah? Parang footnote celebration. Ayun ang lalim doon. Mababa pero malalim. Of the defense nitong si Kenya Yamashita. 
and the Japanese fighter is coming in. Casimero is extending that left jab para pigilan yung pag-abante. Oh! Upper cut on the money. And another left hook. And a right straight. And a left hook. This is like marching. A left, a right, a left, a right. On here in this round number three. Uwi na tayo. Oh! Casimero with another looping shot. That hook is connecting. The problem with the Japanese fighter right now, Sev, is that he is engaging. Pinibitawan itong si John Riel. Naririnig mo eh, no? Uy, pero tinamahan si Casimero doon. Yun, natyol siya ng konti. Naisahan siya. Yamashita connected to the heavy leather that he has been eating against John Riel Casimero. Final seconds of this round. Itong ginagawa eh. He will lead with the left and then fire away with that right. Minute of the fourth saying goodbye. And again, Casimera resumes the body attack. Shifts his attention to the top. Yamashita being tapped seriously here. Oh, good body punch. Yamashita trying to sustain this barrage. Medyo mababa yung isang suntok. But Yamashita game me hanging on. In the middle of this round, connected with some good punches. Oh, that uppercut has been the money punch. And a shot to the ear. And another one. But Yamashita is still very much around. Parang mas iniinda niya yung body punches kasi sa head blows. Parang yung pangan niya kaya eh. Solid body work coming from John Riel Casimero. And then he went back to headhunting. Again, we all know Japanese. Will he continue to headhunt in this round number five? Nasasarap pa niyata sa headhunting eh. Tumatama kasi lahat eh. Oh, exactly, exactly. Ayan o. Yung uppercut on the bottom eh. Tagiliran, tuktok, ilalim. Ayan, dumukot sa ilalim. Yung uppercut niya consistent eh. Yeah. Alam mo, pag tamang execution mo na uppercut, hindi mo mga didepensahan eh. Hindi kasi... Nangalahati na po itong laban na ito. Kung si Casimero is fighting in bursts, hindi siya... Casimero. Ito. Nag-ano, pe-pacing lang. Bukuha ng bagong hangin. Oo eh. But a good counter. They're coming from Kenya Yamashita. Ah, bukuha ng bagong hangin. Pahataw! Yung uppercut na yan, malupit! Malupit! You know, yung song malinis eh. Hindi umaalog yung ulo. Ba't tumatama yan? Right on the nose. Oh! Big Ayan watch! Na. Ayun na. Umaalog o. Oh, dumudugo ha. Ah. And that just gives John Riel Casimero a big target. Nakausap pa niya yun. Pumbiansa kasi. Alam ni Casimero na kaya na yung suntok eh. And you can see that the bleeding is really bothering Kenya Yamashita. Yeah, uh, medyo, si Casimero, matras na rin eh, no? Another nice uppercut. Oh, wala na. Yep, yep. Wala na. You know, wala na. Wala na. Wala na. Sama na. Yep. Sama na tiklop. Oh, that's, this is messy. No legs. No legs. No knee. Ito, walang patsy rito. Diba? Virilio Garcia trying to explain to us, and we're seeing it right now. Uh, a medical team is at your winner by technical knockout, John Riel Casimero.
12 vueltas. 10-9 para Ramírez, dijimos, ¿no? ¿Verdad? Sí, sí. 10 -9. Ha sido brutal el combate para ambos, ¿eh? Sí, tremendo. Y vamos a ver quién le pone más de aquellos para terminar el combate. Cuando entramos ya en el último tercio de pelea, qué buen gancho hacia las zonas blandas de parte del de filipino que va a presionar el pleito, riposte el mexicano que ya no quiere que lo golpeen a los costados Chava, ese es el trabajo que está, está haciendo ahora Casimero, está sufriendo la batalla. repitiendo los golpes hacia las zonas blandas donde duele, donde duele lo vean erguido el mexicano porque no quiere que lo siga golpeando a esa zona con 2 con 15 Está herido Ramírez, ah, pero sangrando, no de muerte, así que bueno, vamos bastante. a ver si, si esa condición física le ayuda un poquito más al mexicano, que como bien lo dices, está sangrando desde hace ya tres episodios. Sí. Lo que pasa es que cuando tiras al cuerpo no erras, y me parece que eso Casimero se está dando cuenta recién ahora. Y seguro le dificulta la respiración también claro. a Ramírez. Y vamos a ver si puede meter la derecha. En corto, otra vez se la repite, va hacia atrás, pasando los golpes, pero más en modo de desesperación, no, no, Ramírez. Y, y peligrosamente, Renato, porque con las manos luego, abajo, exactamente, exactamente. Ya no, ya no es un recurso, ya prácticamente es una respuesta inconsciente a lo que está sucediendo Eso, en el ring. guantes, ahora cómo pesan para mantener las manos arriba. Uno con 20. La izquierda y la derecha. Con pasos hacia atrás logra sacarlo de distancia. Una izquierda tremenda. Se le mueve la humanidad al peleador mexicano Ramírez, pero que sigue lanzando. Lo está tocado Ramírez. La izquierda otra vez. Y está alando aire por la boca Ramírez. El dominio técnico, físico, todo prácticamente de estos dos primeros minutos del décimo ha sido para el campeón John Rien Casimero. Se le vino la pelea encima Ramírez, ¿no? Me sí. parece que está al borde de, de la explosión porque está cansado. ¡Oh! Eh, se, oh, 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 se acabó. Sí, sí. No hay más. Sí. Boleto gratis al país de los sueños. Cortesía de John Riel Casimero. Defiende su cinturón del peso gallo de la OMB. Qué manera de culminar la pelea y lo habíamos dicho. Estaba mal. Estaba golpeado, estaba tan valiante. Estaba exhausto, ya no podía más, es cierto. Le costó sangre y sudor sí. esta jornada, esta defensa del campeonato interino gallo de la Organización Mundial de Boxeo, John Riel Casimero. Definitivamente hemos visto un gran combate, habrá que reconocer a César Ramírez también, al peleador de Tepic Nayarit, pero simplemente brutal el que tiene la onza. Fue finalmente John Riel Casimero y defiende su campeonato. Es que no hay un gran ganador si no tiene enfrente a un gran oponente. Y en este claro. caso, este mexicano que cayó exhausto porque no daba más, creo que fue más la reserva anímica que la física. Luchó contra su propio cuerpo, pero hizo una pelea tremenda. Más allá de las tarjetas y lo que la, la diferencia que podamos tener, de las sí. cuentas, de protección, lo que sea. Hizo una extraordinaria pelea. Quiero ver la reiteración porque no nos dejaba clara a ver, el golpe con que lo termina. Claro, fue esa mano cruzada derecha por, claro. cruzada así. Sí, sí, sí. Allí que va a terminar este pleito. Y vean la manera aparatosa como... Se va a la lona. Se quería levantar ya César Ramírez, simplemente bien ahí su equipo, eh, las recomendaciones médicas de no dejarlo, simplemente habrá que dejar que se recupere un poquito más y después sí que se levante. Porque brutal cae, la forma, claro, brutal cae, la forma cae, en que se cae. Mal. Cae muy mal porque golpea con la nuca sin tener ningún reflejo como para poder evitar ese golpe. ¿no? Y esa es la diferencia, Renato, de estos peleadores. En las peleas complicadas también hay que saber sacar el triunfo y este lo hizo de forma espectacular. Claro, es bueno, un gran, gran mensaje está mandando John Riel Casimero a toda la división del peso gallo. La posible pelea que tenga contra Solani TT para buscar el cinturón real. En este momento tiene el interino de la OMB. Lo más importante es que esté bien César Ramírez. Claro. De todas maneras, me quedo con el apunte de Chava en cuanto a esto de subir de categorías. 
son de pocos quilajes, pero justamente ese subir de categoría y enfrentar a boxeadores físicamente a, a, adaptados, en este caso a la categoría gallo, es un problema que no es menor, aunque sean apenas pocos kilos de diferencia, pero la estructura física es lo que manda en estos casos. Ahora, si me lo dice, no tiene ninguna oportunidad contra Naoya Inoue y tampoco le ve incluso con Anito no, Nere. ¿eh? No, porque Están no, en otro nivel, claro, Casimero otro nivel. está tratando de, de invadir apenas la división de asentarse, pero ese número uno que está ahí en las 118 libras eh, no tiene ninguna oportunidad. No, no. E incluso si le ponen a Luis Neri al mexicano, tampoco tendría ninguna chance eh, John Riel Casimero, que sería una pelea atractiva por la rivalidad méxico filipinas sí. Y es un guerrero. Es un guerrero, sí. Y ganó por eso, por ser un guerrero. Vamos a escuchar el tiempo oficial. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 23 seconds of the minutos y 23 round, segundos. we have a winner by knockout. And still the WBO Interim World Bantamweight Champion, Cuadro Alas, John Riel Casimero. Dos minutos y 23 segundos vía el knockout fulminante que dio Casimero. Okay, for cold break, boys, you take one step back. Don't throw any punches on the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Well, we know that Tete is a terrific technical boxer and also that he's got power, but he's not been in the ring competitively since October last year. In that time, Casimero has had three knockout victories his last four wins have all come by stoppage he is a banger and he is most definitely here thinking and believing that he can defeat this brilliant south african well the obvious <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of teddy which is, is achievable but the problem is then you have that uppercut to worry about when we've seen that how effective that can be in the past he takes a little half a step back tete and then whips that up cut right through the middle tete had one win which came in 11 seconds the quickest ever in a world title fight well it's not uh, i suspect that might never be broken <laughs> casimero who'll be known to british fans as the man who stopped charlie edwards in september three years ago in an ibf flyweight title defense He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez. Both those came by way of stoppage. Oh, he's a quality operator. And if you allow him, if you allow him for, forward momentum and he gets it on his side, then he's, then he's a really hard man to deter. He really is. So for Tete, it's just keeping him in his place all the time. Pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out. Not shortening the gap. That's a tremendous athlete. Stands five foot nine and only weighed eight stone four at the weigh-in. Comfortably made the eight six limit. That's that, and that's the crazy part of it. Oh, oh, he makes the weight relatively comfortable. It's never comfortable making any weight, but he doesn't look as drawn as you see other fighters, and that's uh, one of life's mysteries, John. He wants the brilliant Japanese fighter Noya Inui who beat Nanito Donair in that terrific fight what was it three weeks ago oh, great great fight. great fight wasn't it and uh, it should could have been Tete in the final had he been able to beat Donair but he pulled out of that super series with a shoulder injury it was the right arm the right shoulder and that sort of an injury It's kind of psychological, which he's got to trust himself to yeah, be able to have, throw it. Yeah, of course you have, because that, again, that right hand, which is the jab hand, of course, and Tete is, is his most important weapon. On occasion, he kind of just does enough. We commentated oh, on a fight over in Yekaterinburg last year. It was that fight last October. Yeah. And that was that sort of fight, wasn't it? He won by about a four or five point margin, but he, he never really took any risks at all. No, I, I, you know, he, he can coast the fight, can he? So he can just, he can stick in second gear, just pick you off and be happy with that. 
Well, fairly quiet opening round. Bell just coming up as uh, Casimiro tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through thin air. And Tete may be just doing enough. We'll get Barry's verdict in a moment. We go into the second round. How did you score that one, Barry? I give it to Tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge for me. Casemiro didn't really do uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? test will come when Casimiro lands one of those big punches if or when he or, or when he fully commits to an attack he's jumped into a few attacks but I don't think he's been fully committed and if he when he does that if he can be effective or if Teddy can read it and as we said earlier whip that up in, in the, in the, on the target Casimiro promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao Sean Gibbons representing the little master over here. I think he's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a significant job, you know. He introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure I'm not sure which it was. Again, Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shots. But also, with him not doing that, means he's not being remotely effective. And even though Tete is not doing enough, he should be doing a lot more with that, with that right jab, to be fair. Tete just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over pretty much every fight that he's faced. Talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo. Yeah. The Cuban is fighting Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondao. And look, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight because they oh. might just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match, could it? each other to make the first move, yeah which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is, you know, and again, Casemiro's trying to, trying to attack, but... Oh, short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. As ever, Tete's entourage came to the ring singing and dancing as the set two rounds gone. How have you scored them both? Yeah, I give them both to Tete, but, you know, he's only barely doing enough, John, I just think... Well, it's what we said, isn't it? I mean, yeah, this is he what he did against uh, Mikhail Aloyan when he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he, well, obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, you know, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fight with the longer reach. I, I want to keep it long. you got to make, you got to try and bring it to me. Bags of experience, though, Casimiro. Got a record of five wins and two defeats in 
world title fights. Tete five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Casimiro got him. He's got him with a butt now. He's given hits. He's got him with a body shot, was it? No, it was on the sure. chin. It was. It was a short right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's, all over the place. he's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can Casimiro take him out here? It happened so quickly. And he's still got a long way to go in this round. There's one minute 20 seconds. And Tete still looks unsteady. He's got to buy some time here and make Casimiro miss. Casimiro needs to pick his punches and he can't find the clean shot and he falls down. Tete. I don't think there was a punch which put him down. He just collapsed to the canvas. He's not down recovered the from the first time. shot. He's not recovered from the first knockdown. I'm sure of it. Referee asking, is he okay? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now, and finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by John Real Casimero of the Philippines, and the big South African favourite suffers a defeat which was simply not expected, no way. Well, we're sat here just praising Tete up. And all of a sudden, Casimiro comes in with a short hook, hits, uh, sort of turns the body, hits, hit, hits Tete sort of flush on the chin, squared up, and that was it. He crumbled. It, was, I, it caught him on the on the blind side from where we're sitting, and you, you, I mean, you did well to pick that up because it was such a quick, short shot. It was. He, well, he jumped in the attack there, and you know, and, and we're saying how good Tete is, and he waits and he waits for you to make the mistake, waits for you to engage. But we didn't know we wouldn't give him Casemiro enough credit for all the experience he has and how quick he can close the gap. And it was a lovely, a lovely short, powerful hook. Well, I think it was a right hook. Caught, well, it's caught. a minute or more, maybe two minutes now, since that punch was landed. It's only just now that Tete's got back to his feet. He, he, he was really, really badly stunned by this. You're see it now here. There's, nothing's happening. Now all of a sudden, look, he doubles up really quick, but the first one well, did all the damage, and he was gone. Well, anyway, you, see, you can't see it there by the referee, but, but it was a great shot. He just he stepped around and the left foot's gone out, outside of the right foot of the south ball. Oh, right, right, right on the temple. Right on the temple. Right short little right hook right on the temple. And he does it again, doubles it up again, but the first one did all the damage. He jumps in with a body shot, which I initially I thought was what had done it, and then he lands with two right hands to the side of the head. And he's done. Now look at this now, this is, there's nothing really clean conclusive. He got caught on the top of the head there, Tete. But he wasn't recovered from the first one. You know, the referee could have easily stepped in after the first knockdown. But and, and you know, the referee was Steve Green was right to step in there. Tete's not defending himself. His eyes were all over the place. And wow, what a win! Tete sitting down again on the stool in the ring, and he still looks very, very dazed by what's happened in there. Meanwhile, celebrations on the other side of the ring, hugs and kisses for a new champion and Casimiro of course now is a three-weight world champion having been a former light fly and flyweight world champion and here he is putting himself right into the mix and they talked about Tete against Inui I wonder <laughs> if it might be Casimiro against Inui now and to be fair I feel like we didn't give Casimiro enough credit because he's a world-class fighter but I just felt that he was too small, John, didn't he? Too small coming up the weights that he wouldn't be able to maybe cope with Tete's reach and physical size. But wow. And his speed as well, you know. I mean, yeah, of course, I, yeah. But the fact that Tete hadn't fought for over a year, I wonder if uh, that might I, be a Maybe, a maybe not, but I don't think you could take anything away from Casemiro. What he, though, he just, he, he seen the gap. He took that step on the outside, threw a lovely short right hook, caught him on the temple, doubled it up to make sure, and then jumped all over him. I think... It was a fantastic, a fantastic result. Coming away from home, we know Tete's not home. He feels like he's at home here. Coming away from home, really, as the opponent, no one really thought he would win. No, no one forgot, people forgot that he's a two-eight world champion. No one could thought he could win, and he, he what a sensational victory for him. And Tete, I'm, I'm a very happy for him. Lovely fella, Tete, in floods of tears, being consoled by his trainer Loiso Mtaya. But it's all about the other man, Casimero.
the man from Ormoc City in the Philippines, and he's the one who just cannot stop smiling. Doctor just checking on Tete once again. The belt is there. He had the interim belt already, of course, with Tete being inactive for the last year, and now he gets the world title outright. The WBO belt will be his, and where now Tete from here? Loves the United Kingdom, Tete. He's loved being based over here. But it's going to be celebrations in the Philippines and celebration for the Pacquiao camp. Absolutely delighted by what their man has produced. Thomas Triber's up there waiting for an opportunity to confirm the result. And you talk about Tete, and he does love the UK Tete. Casemiro got to love the UK. Because he comes over and he gets and he gets come from beyond wins every time. Well, not come from beyond with with Edwards, but Edwards, Edwards thought Edwards, it was Edwards crowning crowning glory, and he and he does a job on him, and he does a job on Tete. Well, that's is you know if you've never heard of Zelani Tete, you have to trust me and Barry. He is an out, he has been an outstanding fighter, an outstanding champion, and to give him a beating like that, a shock defeat like that. You have to give all credit to Casimero. You really do. Are oh, you too? And you know, and and Joe, you know, he must be a nice guy, because Charlie Edwards is ringside. And he's well, travelled up. To, he's travelled up that to see him, so it must be something there. And so you've got to give him. Every, you know, he ticks every box that you'd want from a champion. But what a win and what a statement he makes in a in a fantastic division. There is Charlie Edwards at ringside, enjoying the moment. I wonder if he knows we're talking about him. And there's. The moment which makes boxing special. Congratulations from Tete to the new champion. We didn't really see that one coming. And here now is Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 14 seconds of round number three. Our referee in charge, Steve Gray, waves it off. Therefore, your winner by way of technical knockout, and new WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, John Riel Cuadro Alas Casimero. To say he is happy would be a significant understatement. He is utterly delighted.